This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. So plug and roundup. So I'm going to talk about some of the notable plugins that, that I like, and then I'm going to go into some of the newer plugins. Um, go through a small little demo, go and and I'll open up to, to pretty much the audience to see what else they use, they like, and what they recommend as well. So. Uh, if you want to know a little more about me, come find me next meetup. Um, just some incentive to come back. Um, all right, so let's go right into it. My top nine plugins. So some of these are free. I've noted whether or not they are free or not. So Jetpack um, usually comes standard with a lot of WordPress plugins. If not, it's free. It's an automatic plugin. Um, it's kind of a mush up of plugins. It's a plugin with a lot of different plugins built in. Um, Discuss or intense debate. It's a, just an overriding comment system. A little bit more powerful than what they have for the default. Uh, WordPress SEO. Just helps out a little bit more with your SEO needs. Um, Akismet, that's already built in. You just need to activate it. Um, a lot of people have questions about whether or not they have to pay. Um, it's usually recommended to you know, have, throw in a donation when you register for an API key. Uh, you don't necessarily have to. Group Protect. Um, their new plugin. Uh, usually, this is, we're leading towards this for security. Uh, there will be a premium version available, but it's not quite available yet. Uh, Gravity Forms is a premium plugin, which uh, is drag and drop. And I, I like this the best just because it's just so easy. But I'll go over another form plugin that, that's actually great. Vault Press or Backup Buddy, these are backup plugins that are premium. Um, they can be a little bit pricey, but I always tell everybody, you know, what is your data, what is your content really worth? Um, if it's worth a lot, then I definitely recommend one of these um, premium <coughs> plugins. W3 Total Cache, uh, this is just to speed up your site, taking snapshots of, of different pages or posts, and it displays these cached pages, um, or snapshots, rather than loading all the processes for each one of your posts or pages. And Socialize, um, this, this guy decided to create this Plug in. Um, I don't know what it does. What does it do, John? Oh, the guy's a hack. Don't, don't use that. Okay. John made the plugin. <laughs> um, but no, but it's great for social media and it's great to add little snippets of, of what you want to distribute to you <laughs> and, and how people can reach you. Basically, it lets you selectively add which services you want to be on a blog post versus <coughs> using the same services for every single blog post. So you can gear one more towards a tech audience, you can gear one more towards a marketing audience. I will put these slides on the website, yes, because there's, there's a lot here. Uh, more importantly, I'm going to actually go through some of these notable plugins, um, and I'll open up tabs and we'll actually walk through some of these plugins themselves. So I mentioned the premium backup plugin, VaultPress and Backup Buddy. This is fairly new. This is called Updraft, Updraft Plus, uh, Backup and Restore. What's nice about this backup system is that if you have a Google account, you can actually back up to your Google Drive. So you aren't limited so much as to storage, like Dropbox, or you know, paying for other services like Amazon Cloud. Um, this is just something simple. Um, just, and I'll, I'll walk through and how, how you can set that up. Um, speaking of Google, uh, they actually have two plugins. There's a publisher plugin that's in beta right now. And that is mainly for AdSense um, and uh, just a couple of other tweaks. There's also App Engine, which links your Gmail and it also links um, some notes into Drive as well. Uh, there's the MailChimp plugin. If you run a mailing list, um, definitely take a look at the Mail MailChimp plugin. Uh, registering for account is, I think, free. Um, but if you want a mailing list, uh, something simple. Something with two. Ninja Forms is a free version, which I found to be, found to be uh, fairly nice, free version of um, Gravity Forms. This too is drag and drop. I'll go over on how we can customize Ninja Forms. Uh, there's an editorial calendar. So for those of you who like to schedule posts in advance, um, this gives a nice GUI or, or just a general interface to see when your next post is going to be published. Or you can drag and drop and figure out when you want to publish your post next. And finally, this is a, a plugin that's been around for a while. 
Um, there hasn't been a lot of talk about it, and I figured I'd go through it. Um, Carrington Build. It is a custom post slash page template. Now, this, um, this plugin is fairly expensive. I think it's around $300. Um, and I'll go over on some of the features that, that Build has to offer. It might not be for everybody, um, but you know, I'll leave that decision up to you. So I'm going to go over, hopefully, if my tabs are in order, I'll go through each one of these in sequential order. Do you guys have any questions? I have a little pages. You guys are quiet. All right. Yes. So, so is somebody commenting ads or is somebody injecting ads? Are you on WordPress.com or WordPress.org? Or. That's like malware. Yeah. So it's actually kind of fun. WordPress can be one of the more secure content management systems out there in general, as long as you update regularly. Yeah. Um, so their depressive update schedule kind of just keeps it fresh and keeps it on top of that kind of thing. So the second you fall a little bit out of date, you open yourself up to um, certain exploits. So it's very possible that you know something. Make sure you use the Kismet. Make sure you use the Kismet. Yeah. But, um, well, some, we, some of the plugins we that Eric's talking about might, might help with that, just to prevent it from happening in the first place. All right. So Updraft Plus, um, right now it's free. Um, there is a premium version available, um, although it's not really recommended since it's free and it does everything that you know a lot of people need to do. Um, just like Backup Buddy, it backs up to S3, which is the simple storage that Amazon has, Dropbox, Rackspace, FTP, email. The biggest thing is I haven't been able to find a backup solution that backs up to Google Drive. Now Google, if you have a Google account, I don't know how much storage you have. I think for most people, it's about 10 gigs, maybe 15 gigs. That's plenty of storage space to back up a lot of your sites for multiple iterations. Um, sites like Dropbox, they offer about two gigs, it's free, and that tends to fill up fairly fast. So this is something that's new, it's nice. What I can do here, I have this installed already. So I'm going to do a little demo site. So Updraft, Backup and Restore. Now, I selected here, copying your backup to remote storage, and if you select Google Drive, we'll actually walk you through step by step on how to set this up. It, there's, there's, there might be some complication. Google has, still hasn't really merged to their new interface, so there's a lot of, there's two directions. There's one for their old interface and there's one for the new interface. Um, but really, if you follow step by steps, you click on this link here to your API console. So now this is a new window. Okay, this is my API console. Okay. And create a project link. Didn't quite show up. Oh, here we go. Create a project. Call this demo. Okay. Next, it says activate the Drive API. That's enabled. We're going to set up our credentials. We're going to click a little gear. Enable it. Okay. So once we set up our API credentials, we're 
were to create this OAuth 2.0 client ID. This is a web application. to enter in some of the details. The details are actually back on our site. So what we have here is we need to copy this address that they link here into our URL. And then once you update it, it gives you your client ID and it gives you your client secret. And you guys can see this. Yay. Um, it's, no, it's no big deal. You guys should probably keep your secret. Um, luckily, I can delete these. Once you're done, you, get your, you just paste in your drive client ID and your drive client secret. And you click save. Once you click save, you want to authenticate with Google. And this is the last step that you need to do. Go in, they'll ask you what account you want. I have a lot of accounts. They'll ask you, you know, do you want this app to control the Google Drive? Um, it's going to exchange some files and, and manage it. Just click accept. And you should be all set. So it says right here, success, you've authenticated your Google Drive account. Ignore my 30%. I've used up 30% of almost 11 gigs, um, but it'll tell you how much space you have left so that you can start setting up annual backups or you can, you can set up automatic backups. And I went through this fairly fast. A lot of the stuff is listed um, on the plugin itself and it gives you a nice step-by-step -step tutorial. Yes? Um, I use Backup Buddy a lot, but, and I like it, but some web hosting uh, vendors do not like Backup Buddy, uh, WP Engine among them. So, have you had any issues using this? So, backup, uh, WP Engine doesn't need a backup solution because it automatic, they automatically back it up for you. Well, if you want to migrate the site using Backup Buddy, you can't do it. Oh, no. Right. No. But anyway, how compatible is this with some of those, like, WordPress-only vendors? I, I don't know. I haven't actually tried to migrate any sites. Um, as far as I know, they did backs up everything the database and your files themselves. Um, I don't have any experience with moving around sites. So, is there a restore process built in, or it's just creating backups and it's up to you to figure out how to how to restore them? Nope. Um, as far as restoring, that I don't know either. I didn't break the site to restore it. Yeah. So I actually don't know. But we, you know, we hope that we never have to get that far. <laughs> we, uh, we migrate a couple of times using it. It's very straightforward. <coughs> oh, yeah. just create, we just will usually create the backup on the server and then just FTP it out, FTP it to wherever we're migrating it, and then use it as store. There's a lot of things you can pay for. Yeah, there, there, there are a lot of well, charges if you want certain features. Um, I, I try to keep it free so that you know, people can at least use some of the basic features and then take a look at some of the premium ones. Any other questions? All right. So, yes, we're in Microsoft. Microsoft does have a plugin. Um, um, we're going to talk about Google. Uh, the first one is the Google Publisher plugin, and this is in beta right now. Um, for those of you who use AdSense um, to eject ads into your site, um, you guys might want to take a look into this plugin. Uh, I didn't install this, I just, wanted, I just thought it was 
kind of interesting. Um, rather than you injecting code into your site, this plugin will do it for you. Um, I just thought it was interesting that Google came out with this, this, this plugin. The other one is a Google App Engine for WordPress. And this one is a little different, and I didn't install this either. Um, but it allows you to take pictures from your Google account, uh, your email, um, and kind of import that into your WordPress. WordPress Ninja Forms. Uh, I mentioned before, this is sort of like a, a Gravity Forms clone. And I did create a form. And some people use Contact Form 7, um, which is another free form plugin. I, I, I feel like I like the drag and drop a lot better. It gives a little bit of ease here. So we can put a form title, test form. Or, you know. <coughs> okay. Set this up. And we go to field settings. And really, it's just, oh, just clicking. Adding a text box. Okay, once we're done with our text box, we can add a first name. Last name, and let's do email. And once we're done, we can save our field settings, and then we can take a form preview. We got something nice, something simple, fairly easy, and it's really lightweight, and this is how it'll look on our site. Yeah, it's free. It's free. Yeah. Is there a way to um, add your own style sheet? Usually that's with your theme. It usually takes in what you have for the theme, so it looks a little bit different from when I had 2014 up there. Um, I'm not sure about premium themes. Excuse me. Oh, can you inject your own style sheet into the into the forms? I think you can, but it usually takes what's there for the theme. Do you know where the where the Data entered into the form, where does it go? No. So, unlike Gravity Forms, Gravity Forms you can actually keep the data in an XML um, and you can export that. This I actually don't know. So, do you get an email? You get an email. Text format, you can put it into a CSV form or like. From, from what I understand, you get an email. So, if somebody fills this out, and this is where. When so you develop a form site. Schmo, fill out your contact form. Here's all of them. And that's it. Just as an email. As, a, as an email, yeah. Okay. Yep. So it's a little bit more cumbersome since you do have to dig through emails. Mm -hmm. um, submissions? <coughs> On the left, it's submissions. Isn't that where the form is? Oh. It says you can export them. Yeah, I guess you can. I haven't tried it. I haven't tried it.
questions on this report? Uh, MailChimp for WordPress? Just really quickly. Um, if you have a MailChimp account, it's fairly easy to get this up and running. Um, you just get your API key. It's a nice thing if you link that. It's connected. So all you have to do is create a form. You can inject this into a post, a widget, or even a page, and create a more of an email list that you guys can send out to. Comment. I've used this, and uh, if you have multiple email lists in MailChimp and you want to have different forms directing the emails to a different list, you have to buy a little upgrade. I think it's 35 bucks or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But it works really nicely. Yeah. Yep. And this is right here, you know, for premium version, you can know, upgrade to pro. So a lot of these, they have that pro version. I'm trying to cover just a lot of the basic. Editorial calendar. So I did a small little little demo here. So this is all it does. So if you run a site with multiple authors, um, this is great for you. You can see when your post, when someone has scheduled a post, or when somebody has written a post. Um, you can see I scheduled a post for tomorrow. You pile it over. You can edit, quick edit right here within um, the window. But this is just something nice. This, is something, this isn't something that's absolutely necessary. Um, but I thought this was a really nice tool, um, especially for those who like to schedule posts in advance or who like to sit down right for a couple of hours. You can see and set time when you deliver your content. You can drag them around too. Yep. I'm not posting that tomorrow. I'm posting that next, next week. It doesn't do anything in the front end, this is strictly in the dashboard, yes. Any questions? I thought this was good. Right, the last one I'm going to go over, this one will take a little bit more time. So Carrington Build, um, there's a company called Crowd Favorite, and they developed this plugin called Build, um, as opposed to Builder, which is a, a theme. Um, from iThemes. So what I did here was I installed the plugin and I activated it. And I made this test page here. And when you open up your uh, WYSIWYG editor, normally, I'm sorry, new one. Normally you have this WYSIWYG where you can type in and what you see is what you get. You have the visual editor, you have the text editor. This is an additional tab called Build. And it tells you, you know, once you go into Build, you lose what you have here. Okay. So we have this little interface. Let's just start building and click this. And it gives us some options here. You can choose whatever layout that you want. So I can choose one column, choose two, three, um, left sidebar, right sidebar. Um, here I can add a three column module. I can add a new row and have a two column module. And this is powerful because every time you add a module, you click through here, you can have different types of content. So I can have a carousel. I can have images. I can have quotes. I can have plain text. I can have um, Maybe a gallery, so maybe throw in a gallery. And I don't have any images on our demo site, but I'll fix 
So this is what I built um, a little earlier as a test page. So you can see I made this block quote here. You know, this is a quote. Pasted some plain text. Um, I have an image in the middle. I have a, a post call out. I actually pulled in a page that I created earlier about well, John. There's nothing on there. Um, and you know, if I want to add another image, I can click image. So you can do this on any page. It's your decision on whether or not you want to use build for this particular page template. Um, you don't have to. You can still use the, the normal WYSIWYG editor. This just goes on top of it, and it just gives you a lot more custom functions. So once I'm done, I just click update. And you, I can continue to add different modules as well. Let's do our page. So you can see here, this is our test page. Because of the theme, this isn't quite as nice. Um, but this is a quote. This is what I had for our quote text. I have the warm of some text that's scrolled all the way down. And here, I have our stock image, I have the jitterbug, and I have that page about John. So you can do a lot to customize. It's up to you on how you use it. Um, but this is just a sample of what you can do within a post or within a page. Um, not recommended perfectly. Like I said, it's a, it's a fairly hefty price tag. It is three hundred dollars. But if you're looking for a lot of customization within your theme, it's something to look into. Um, I'm not sure how well it will play with custom themes or themes from that were designed specifically for your site. Um, but for a lot of the standard themes, it does work nicely. Do you know how that compares to Optimize Press? I haven't used Optimize Press. Is this something similar? Yeah, I mean, it feels a little bit. I haven't used it yet either. Um, it's really more for building sales pages, landing pages. Okay. No, I, I don't know much about it. Uh, I just want to go ahead and let you know that Elegant Team has also this kind of plugin for much cheaper. Okay. If, it's, if, you, if you have a regular, you know, if you're a regular member, then it's 49 bucks. So it's really important. Okay. So that, that's usually built into your theme. I'm not sure if it, I'm not sure that question, let me see. Your theme should be responsive. I'm not sure if the build makes it not responsive. It shouldn't. That's besides the window. Yeah. It could be the theme. This is, this is um, 2013. So yeah. So keep it responsive. Yeah. There's uh, some similar plugins as well, but uh, WordPress Digital Editor. That one is responsive. It's a little buggier. I like this one that you stated though, though, for a couple of other users to kind of you can kind of go back to speak to. Yeah, it's nice, but it's also connected to the It's a nice option just because it does give you that extra tab, so you don't have to use it the whole time. You only need it on the pages that you know you want to customize for specific you know events or for specific landing pages. So it's good. Okay. It looks very cool, but I just looked it up on my phone here, and it says the last update was over a year ago, which is not a great sign. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it's not. Um, I'm not sure what the status is. I saw that too. Mm -hmm. um, it's just. I threw this up here because it, it is an option, and I think it's one of the better options that, that's out there for that custom design without having to go deeper into the code. Sure, yeah. Do you guys have any questions about these plans? 
Sorry to keep this short. It'll be nice if it looks like a neat leaf. What was the other quote? And there is, uh, and Lady Max said that there's something similar in elegant themes that's much cheaper. It's called elegant themes page builder. Really good. Oh, okay. Oh, visual composer. Visual composer? PayPal buttons? Uh -huh. Like customized PayPal buttons. So it's not just like, you know, just insert uh, what PayPal did, but do like coupons or things like that. Coupons. I think that's like that. I don't know of any. Okay. I, I don't do a lot of e-commerce. Ken? I would recommend WordPress Simple PayPal Shopping Cart. Okay. 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 I, yeah. I, I used to use it. That's a really long name. WordPress. WordPress simple, simple PayPal, PayPal shopping cart. Shopping cart. Wow. Okay. It's a free plug. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, guys.